All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Shane with Progression Technologies, and uh, we're just about ready to get started. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing workgroup PDM, uh, primarily just looking at some ways you can go ahead and uh, some settings that you can change in there, maybe a few things to help speed setup time, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not going to stay on the PowerPoint too long because we all know those are just a boring crutch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mostly work in the Vault Admin tool initially, and then we'll uh, jump over to uh, 2015 to look at the uh, client side. Uh, I'm going to work in 2015, uh, but we all know uh, Workgroup hasn't changed a whole lot as far as interface, so uh, anything we're looking at, you'll see in, in older versions of SOLIDWORKS also. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's do a little housekeeping. Uh, if anybody would, uh, if you could hit your uh, raise your hand button uh, to let me know that you can hear me down there, or uh, if you would, uh, go over to that control panel and uh, maybe just type something in the question section and let me know. Oh, perfect. All right. Hey, thanks. So everybody can hear me. I appreciate that. Uh, all right. Well, then let's uh, let's dive into it a little bit. Uh, that's where you can go ahead and ask questions if you have anything, and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and do those uh, towards the end. All right. Thanks. All right. So um, here's uh, where we're going to start because all the real power, all the good stuff's actually in the Vault Admin tool. And uh, so we're going to go and we're going to talk about uh, some of the common settings for the vault. Uh, we're going to look at revision scheme. We're not going to dive too much into it other than just discuss that a little bit. Uh, the copy projects and copy permission settings, life cycle, uh, and some of the settings there, and then standards, libraries, and toolbox. So uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and escape out of that and let's bring that vault admin tool over to you all right so here's our vault admin tool we're going to start with the uh, vault settings and uh, just take a look at things here some of the common settings why you may want to or not use them uh, we're going to start here with the uh, keep extra copies and uh, basically what that does is when someone checks in a file it's going to keep an extra copy of that latest file there uh, on the server, so it's always available. It's it's a good protection thing, a good safety thing, as far as having that extra copy there all the time. Um, the downside, of course, is space. Uh, they're going to generate space in the uh, on the server, and it also adds another search level to the. Um, when you're looking for files. So you can slow things down uh, with it. So it really is kind of dependent on the way your server is structured uh, and, uh, and your users, how many users you have, um, how their computers are working. Um, but a lot of times this one can, can be you know, a little redundant and wasteful. Um, next one you wanna really look at is the force user login. And this is more just a protection and best practices one. Um, but basically, that'll allow a user to save their username, but not their password. So every time SolidWorks is open, uh, they have to uh, log in with their password again. And a uh, great way to, like I said, just best practice, keep things safe. Uh, revision bumping uh, and latest revision overwrite, those are two that... Uh, for the most part, you want to leave them unchecked. They they basically allow you to go in and and manually change a revision, uh, take it out of sequence, or uh, if you want to check something in and you want to be able to check it back in at the current revision level, even though that's not the normal thing. Um, so these are two that you know if there's a a reason to do that if maybe a file just got really messed up and you wanted to fix it and put it back where it was and maintain that revision. Um, 
you know, that's where you can use these. And it's one of those things you can turn them on and then turn them back off again. So, uh, you know, something you want to use um, uh, on an as needed basis. Um, uh, allow users to create sub projects. Uh, another one you want to keep checked often, um, you'll have a primary project you're working on and uh, you know, you let your users create sub projects within there so that maybe they create a, a folder for uh, documents or references, spec sheets, that kind of thing. So uh, leaving this one open is kind of nice. It makes it quick and easy for your users to set up that folder structure within the projects. Uh, let's see. Um, do, do, do. Beyond that, create PDFs in the vault. This one's a, a great help if you uh, if you do have viewers who are not necessarily SolidWorks users. And what this will do is every time it's checked in, it creates that new PDF. It's going to write a new PDF for you. So it's always the latest, uh, whether it's in a release date or not, it's it's always going to be the latest revision for you. Um, so this one's kind of nice and, and great for those those non-SolidWorks users you have out there. Um, so those are some of the quick, easy settings. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and jump over to. Uh, uh, so uh, another one you want to look and and keep track of uh, on your Vault Management tab is the uh, uh, first is the uh, vault log and this is one go ahead and and let that keep doing its thing one of the things we recommend is maybe when you do an update uh, to your vault or move your vault at that point go ahead and save it and then start a new vault with that move or that update uh, just so you have a, a good log of how the vault was set up and working prior to that happening so uh, beyond that you've got uh, um, some great information here about where the vault is to help you the status of the service. Um, one of the things that I will tell you is if your uh, vault is on a server somewhere else and uh, on, a, on a different server and you're running the vault admin tool on your local machine, this service may show not started uh, or maybe blank uh, and that's just because you're not actually on the machine, so it's not able to read the status of the service. So if you're working on your Vault Admin tool on your local machine and, and you don't have anything in this box, don't don't get too worried about that necessarily. All right. Um, all right, new users and groups. Uh, this one's a pretty basic uh, tab. The uh, the only real required information here would be your uh, username, a password. Uh, you can actually leave password blank and it'll accept that. Um, but uh, uh, username, email, not a lot of value there and comments, um, you know, not a lot of value there, but, but just these top three, as long as you have those, uh, you're good to go. The uh, and then as far as adding people to groups, uh, um, you know, same deal. The nice thing about going ahead, we have folks who question the value of uh, using these groups. The nice thing about using groups is just like with Enterprise PDM, you can go ahead and control access at the group level, and it just saves you um, having to go in and set it individually for people. So again, it speeds things up, makes life a little a uh, little quicker, a little easier for you on the ad administration side. Uh, uh, search, not a lot here to work on. Uh, this is all pretty much by default. And then we get into the, the fun one, which is revisions. Um, Revisions, the primary thing I'm going to let you know on revisions is um, plan it, 
plan it and plan it again. Think about how you want it set up. Because once you start a revision scheme, then you're, you're kind of stuck with it. If you, uh, um, if you start, uh, if you decide to change it, you pretty much have to go through and open anything on the previous scheme to, to be able to change it. And uh, quick question, so I'll stop and answer it. Uh, no, we're going to get into the user side of it here in just a few minutes. We're going to hit the admin side of, of work group, and then we're going to go to the user side next. So um, we are going to hit the client side. Um, so, you know, a lot of folks like primary, a primary and a secondary. Uh, working copy has some value. Uh, so folks will use that. On this one, um, the one thing I'll also mention is right down here, these two boxes um, are kind of nice. Uh, this last revision optional is something that you can use and ties in with your life cycle. If you're one of those companies who uh, uses a primary and secondary while a project is in work in progress, um, and then once it's in a release state, it only has a primary, um, then that's where you'll want this because that'll give you the option to do A1, A2, A3, release it to A. And then when you revise it, it goes to B01, B02, and then we're released to revision B. So, um, so that's what this little checkbox is here. Um, so these are, uh, this is one of those settings that again, when you plan your revision scheme and at the same time plan your life cycle, you're, you're going to want to really think that through and, uh, and, and put it together, put those two together at the same time. Um, revision table. Um, you know, this is your standard revision table, whether you enable it, what you want shown there, do you want it to show all of them? Or again, maybe if you do use primary for released versions and secondary for WIP projects, maybe you don't want to show those secondary um, uh, revisions just when it's released and at a primary revision. So, uh, all right, I'm going to, uh, let's just jump over here back to life cycle first keep things together so uh, again life cycle uh, the key here is test it um, set up your life cycle and and then test how you want things done um, and that everything changes one of the things you'll notice and we'll go ahead and let's just put in a, a whip and let's go ahead and add a release uh, one of the things you'll notice is options on the screen change depending on different settings. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is you can control access by what state it is in. So once something's released, maybe you don't want anybody to be able to write to that file, obviously. Um, so there are a lot of things here. Um, if you have a, uh, a for approval status, um, then maybe you only want certain people to have access when it's in for approval. Maybe only uh, managers or, or whatnot will have access to it then. So you can control access to it. Um, uh, so there's... Uh, there's a lot you can do here, but one of the things is when you uh, select one of these, you're going to see here um, as you work through this, when you select items here, um, other options will change. So pay attention to what you're doing, um, what options you've selected, and, and it's an instant thing. So once you click it, select it here, click apply, then you can jump over to the uh, client side in SOLIDWORKS and test it right then and there so that you can see, okay, did I get the expected results? Did I get the, the options I was looking for? Uh, log in as a different user. Are they now only able to do read only? 
Um, so, so take a little time, write up what you want to have happen and then, and then go from there. So, uh, that's, uh, that's the big one on life cycle, but it is pretty handy, uh, to, uh, for you. All right. Uh, yeah. So now, um, now what I want to do is talk about some things we can do here, um, to speed things up. And one of the questions we get often is, is setting up folder structures. Uh, we're all used to the explorers kind of an environment where we, uh, we have folders and subfolders, and uh, we can do that in work group, uh, and we can do it a couple ways. If you have projects set up, um, or a project set up with a folder structure you like, um, then uh, you can go ahead and and just copy that project, and uh, and this can save a lot of time. Uh, you do have to pay attention. We're all aware that uh, one of the, and I don't know if you, it depends on your point of view, but one of the limitations for work group is you can't have duplicate file names. Well, along those same lines, you also can't have duplicate project folders. So um, you can see here as I've duplicated this project, we've had to change the names on down. So, um, so if we come in here and select copy project, um, you know, we have to come in here and we're going to just call this, um, uh, big fishing company in honor of doing some fishing this weekend. And we'll go ahead and just copy that. We'll bring it down here. Uh, we're going to select a root level. We want it to go under the customers and include subfolders here. Now, another thing is um, in order for this to work, you have to have a document in each of the subfolders. Otherwise, there's nothing really there for it to copy. So again, we just throw a blank. Um, file in there and we come in here and we go ahead and control V. Let's go ahead and get that. So we'll go ahead and copy that over. Let's bring it over here. So we can go ahead and now uh, we can copy the project and it gives us our big fishing company all ready to go. Um, the other great one here is this copy project permission. So if we come up here and we look at this, we can go ahead and copy those same permissions to everything. We can go ahead and just select all if we'd like. Um, but this is a great one for um, setting up anything we've got going here um, and just really quick going through and setting those permissions and, and copying the permissions really quickly down the line. Uh, so just, uh, just a couple of quick ones there that you can use to, uh, to move your projects forward. Um, and then finally, the only other one that's kind of interesting is, is the standards library. And this is one that I think catches a lot of folks up. Um, so first of all, let's, let's talk about disable check-in of documents and display referenced files in a separate project. Um, why would we disable check-in of documents? Um, and I'll come back to that, Jared, in just a bit. Um, if your toolbox parts, obviously, are toolbox parts. They're off the shelf. They're not something you're building. They're not something you're going to modify. So um, you don't want to revision control that. You don't want it generating a bunch of history, project history, that kind of thing, on something that you don't 
you're never going to modify a, a wheel, uh, you know, a caster for something, um, you know, any stock part, anything that uh, that you're going to McMaster car for, um, you know, is something that uh, you you don't need to check in. So um, you don't need to revision control. So that's part of the reason why you want to disable the um, the check in of these documents. And so checking this is going to do that for your toolbox parts as well as any folder you specify here. Um, and with toolbox parts, we do see a lot of folks who come in and they add and they specify where their toolbox is. Um, and as you can read right up here, um, that's just redundant because if SolidWorks sees any of those names in a folder, it's going to know they're a, uh, it's a toolbox. Additionally, if it's a SolidWorks toolbox part, the part is flagged. We all see the cool icon that toolbox parts get. So that icon, the, the flag within that file, is um, it's already known as a toolbox part. So really, when you click Add here, what you want to add is, uh, is that folder where you have um, just parts that aren't within SOLIDWORKS. So again, those McMaster car parts that we all love to go and download and, and have in the system. That's what you're going to put that, that standard parts um, folder is going to go right here. Um, and then we'll jump over to, uh, to 2015. Um, and we're going to go ahead and turn on. If you don't have it turned on, uh, work group, then go ahead and we'll be turning that on. And let's see, did I give my, yeah. So, um, so once we're in here, uh, here's our vault. Oh, let's go and, uh, hold on. We need to add a, uh, Let's go ahead and set this up and add a folder. So um, display name is um, stock. I want to make sure we don't use uh, any words that uh, are going to make it too obvious to solid to work groups. We'll go with stock parts. And we're going to come over here. We'll jump down to our K drive. And let's see if we got. I know I have. There it is. Okay. So there it is. So we'll use our stock parts. And um, click OK. So now we've got that on there. We'll click Apply. And now we'll jump back to SolidWorks. Go up here and hit refresh. And now you can see there's that uh, library components and there's our folder. Um, so that uh, being able to see that library components there and you'll see the blue color because it's uh, it's not revision controlled. Anything inside there shown underneath there is is not going to be revision controlled. And that's that's all this checkbox here. So. Um, Great tool, like I said, primarily here. Um, you just want to remember, uh, you don't need to add the, the SolidWorks toolbox parts folder to it. That's already a given. All right. So, um, so now let's jump over here and let's look at a couple things on the user side um, real quick. And um, so... One of the first things we're going to do is come down here. So we're going to right click in here. Let's look at our work group options. Um, and uh, one of the first tabs we want to look at is this references and where used tab. And um, one of the things that, uh, that we see here is I have everything pretty much checked 
on this folder that I can. You can see here, look for, and we've got everything checked. And when you move to a PDM system, you're now handing over control of searching for documents and managing references to the PDM system. So by having all of these checked, by adding search paths here, um, we can come in here and, and um, oftentimes people will, um, will create a specific folder for their local files when they check stuff out in Workgroup. Um, the it's it's redundant and by adding these check marks here or folders down here what you're essentially doing is forcing work group to do searches and look for parts that it doesn't need to look for um, so really for the most part this tab references where used should be blank and just let work group do everything uh, and I know that runs counter to what I generally say to folks, which is never trust SolidWorks and Windows to manage your files completely. Um, but, but in this case, it is just adding a lot of overhead that you don't necessarily need. Um, so uh, from here, um, I want to jump over to all the way over to the folders tab. And um, Here's another one that uh, that gets overlooked, and this one um, we we want to add a location in here uh, that uh, that you keep your files. Uh, doesn't matter really uh, what you call it, um, but uh, but have something in here. Maybe we'll call this uh, working projects. Uh, click OK. Now, uh, why do we want to do this? Why does it matter that we use a folder for this? Uh, there's a couple reasons. First of all, we've specified now where uh, files are going to be located. We're letting work group know that's where to put things, that's where to search. So it's going to speed things up there. Uh, from an admin side of things, it's going to allow you to set up, uh, create a settings file and put that same folder on everybody's computer. So it's going to improve consistency and ease in deployment. Um, and then the last item is something we, we try to recommend folks do is to create antivirus exclusions. And a lot of times people are, uh, IT departments are hesitant to add exclusions for a particular file type. In other words, they don't want to exclude uh, the uh, SolidWorks part file type, for instance, because theoretically it's possible someone could send a virus that way to you in, the, in an email. Um, but what you can do is the next best thing is to go in and just exclude this folder. So that way anything that gets written to uh, or read from this folder gets ignored by the antivirus. And uh, as we're all aware of, anytime we can lose a little overhead, a little computing, um, we're going to be well ahead of the game. So um, so adding a, a folder here and specifying that folder is, um, is, is going to put you ahead of the game there. Um, all right. And then the only other thing we've got here on the user side is... Uh, is the My SolidWorks Workgroup PDM Cleanup. And um, just another one that uh, that I really like to see folks use. Uh, clean out that local cache. Uh, like I said, I I never like to trust Windows and Workgroup to, uh, to manage all my files and make sure that I've always got the latest. Um, so once you're done working on a file uh, or an assembly, um, go ahead and, and, and check it back in and clean out this folder regularly. We, uh, we don't want SolidWorks or, or Windows to assume, oh, yep, that's the right file when, uh, when it's not. So um, 
you know, go ahead and, and make sure you, you look into that. Um, all right, so that's, uh, that's really about it. I did have one more item for you, and I'm going to pop this one up for everybody to see, and I wish I had good music. What does the future hold for work group, and what about the rumored uh, PDM standard that's coming out? Um, yep, it's coming out. The, uh, uh, it should be available with uh, the beta version of 2016. Um, it's going to be SQL based. Uh, it'll use SQL, SQL Express uh, for its database management. The, um, uh, so it'll be much more like Enterprise PDM in that regard. Uh, because it's using SQL Express, it does have some limitations. And a lot of those limitations are going to be uh, very similar to what we see with Workgroup currently. Um, in fact, uh, having said that, let me just hit uh, Jared's question. Custom properties uh, and templates for, to unique to each project. Um, no, you currently can't do that uh, with... Uh, with work group, um, the properties get assigned across the board, and you just have to choose which ones you're willing to use. With PDM standard, once it comes on board, uh, you should have that ability. Uh, we uh, we have yet to see how extensive that's going to be. We're we're still waiting for that. Um, so uh, the next thing is, so we know when it's coming out. Beta 2016, we should be able to start playing with this new work group or a PDM standard. Work group, uh, at least right now, will be released and upgraded in 2016 and in 2017, but in 2018, it won't be available with the 2018 release. Um, again, that's just what's been put out lately. Um, as far as migration goes, uh, there should be a tool for migrating from work group to PDM standard. This should be similar to the tool uh, for going from work group to EPDM as far as mapping and, and moving files and projects over. Um, and uh, the only other item is if you've got projects or if you've got add-ins like work group viewer for your um, non-SOLIDWORKS users, and you own seats of Workgroup Viewer, uh, those seats will be converted, that, that uh, add-in will be converted to work with PDM standard uh, straight across. So you'll still have that same functionality available to you. So, uh, you know, it, it's something that you're going to want to start uh, sandboxing early uh, when the beta versions come out. So if you are an administrator and want to see what's going on, uh, I would start hitting up IT now, uh, see if you can't squirrel away a, uh, a computer so that you can set this up in a, in a separate non-production environment, uh, set this beta version up and start testing it and see what you think. That uh, it, it should be nice. It'll certainly make um, migrations a little better. Uh, you should see some performance improvements as far as searches goes uh, with that that change. So, um, so that's what I've got, uh, Jared. I hope that kind of answered your question. Really, it was bottom line. It's kind of a no. Um, but uh, anybody else have any questions or concerns? Uh, real quick, uh, if you uh, do or you get off of here and you think, oh, I really wanted to know more about this. Uh, here's my contact info. Uh, if uh, if you're not using work group or uh, have been thinking about it, you know, you know it, it, if you've got more than one person working on projects, you really should. Uh, work group and then PDM standard are available uh, to anybody with uh, SolidWorks Professional or Premium. Um, it's there, it's free, and it's um, just great insurance. If no other reason, it's uh, it's great protection for you. Uh, so there's that. 
And then uh, coming up next two weeks, we've got PhotoView 360 uh, next week. And then after that, we're going to look at uh, how you can use SOLIDWORKS Electrical for simulating and generating hydraulic and pneumatic systems also. Um, so that should be pretty cool. And uh, if uh, nobody has anything, then, uh, then I'll let you all get back at it. And, uh, but, uh, but do feel free to either contact me or email me. Uh, if you do have any questions or just want to get together and uh, and look into this little deeper, more a little more one-on-one -on -one kind of demo stuff, uh, we'll be glad to get with you and, and work on it. So, uh, hey, thanks everybody for coming down, and I hope you learned something new and and uh, look forward to talking to you in the future. Thanks. <laughs>